So in my last video about calcium acetate, I mentioned I would eventually get around to making it from Tums, but I wouldn't be really sure when that would be. Well, it turns out that I did it right away. To make calcium acetate, we're effectively just reacting calcium carbonate with acetic acid, which is basically just vinegar. But to do this, we need a source of calcium carbonate. In the previous video, I used eggshells as my source of calcium carbonate, but Tums are actually mostly calcium carbonate, so they're also a pretty good source. The problem with Tums is that the calcium carbonate only makes up like half of the mass of each tablet, and the rest of it is something like sugar. We can't follow the same procedure that we did with the eggshells, because if we don't take out the sugar and we start to boil things down, the sugar will actually break down and the whole thing will become a huge mess. In the end though, the procedure is almost the same, we just have an added step at the beginning where we have to burn away all of the organic material. Like I said in the previous video, the purpose of making calcium acetate is to make flammable jelly, and also to do a dry distillation to produce acetone. So for this I use the Ultra Strength Tums which have about 1 gram of calcium carbonate per tablet. As usual, something's not shown here, and I also used 1800 milliliters of 10% cleaning vinegar. You could also use regular 5% vinegar, but if you do, you'll have to boil off a lot more water. The first step is very simple, and we need to bash up and crush all of the tablets, and I find the easiest way to do this is to put them into a plastic bag and then smash them with a hammer. This is what the tablets look like when they're intact prior to crushing them with the hammer, and this is what it looks like after I'm done with them. You'll notice that there's still a lot of large chunks, and that's okay, we really just don't want to have any full intact tablets left. After it's all been crushed up, I pour them all into a stainless steel pot. I start to heat up the tablets using a camping stove, and this must be done outside because it's going to produce a lot of smoke. It actually takes quite a long time to heat up, so just to get things going, I start burning the tablets on the top using the torch. I then shake around the pot to mix things around, and then I repeat the process and char the top stuff again. Eventually, after enough heating and time, the tum should start to smoke a lot. This is good because it means we're getting close to igniting it, but ideally you don't want to produce this much smoke. So coming back to the torch, I start to heat the top layer again, and we try to get things ignited. Eventually you'll see a flame forming and this is good, so just keep blasting things with the torch and keep the heating up. As we continue, you see that the tums start to char, they turn black, and eventually they turn white. The white stuff that's left over is the calcium carbonate and this is what we want. Eventually we'll get to the ideal point where the tums are simply just burning and not very much smoke is being produced. So at this point we have a nice Tums fire going and we just have to wait for the majority of the sugar to burn away. At some point it might start to smoke again because the oxygen can't really make it to the bottom, so to try to remedy this I poke the large chunk to break it into smaller pieces. As I do this and I expose the bottom layer to air, you can see that the flames come back and the smoking decreases again. Eventually we'll get to a point where it looks like everything's mostly just ash, and there's not much smoking or flaming going on. At this point things are still burning, and we need to break up the large chunks into smaller pieces and keep the camping stove going. As we continue heating and stirring things, everything will become more or less grayish white. I kept the heating up, and I occasionally just tried to use my pestle to crush the larger chunks into smaller pieces. One thing you should keep in mind is that at this point the ash is still extremely hot, so you really should avoid touching it. Eventually we'll get to a relatively uniform grey powder, and at this point we're pretty much done. The powder is grey because it's a mix of calcium carbonate, unburned carbon, and other byproducts, but unfortunately the camping stove doesn't get hot enough to burn away everything. If we used a hotter heat source, we would ideally be left with a pure white calcium carbonate powder, but this is more than good enough for what we need to use it for. I actually weighed out everything and the mass of this grey powder is about 175 grams. Ideally if each tablet you know contained 1 gram of calcium carbonate and we have 160 tablets, then we should have a mass of 160 grams, but clearly there's about 15 grams of some other stuff present. So now we proceed on in the exact same way we did for the eggshell video, so everything's added to a large Erlenmeyer flask. On top of the calcium carbonate, we slowly add in about 1800 milliliters of 10% vinegar. 
I added the vinegar in small portions because if it's added all at once, it would pretty easily foam out of the flask. What we're doing in this step is we're reacting calcium carbonate with acetic acid and vinegar to form carbon dioxide, water, and calcium acetate. The calcium acetate that's formed is soluble in water, so it dissolves into the water right when it's formed, but the CO2 is a gas and it bubbles out. In this reaction, I'm actually using an excess of calcium carbonate to make sure that we use up all of the acetic acid, but that's okay because calcium carbonate's not soluble in water, and to get rid of it at the end, we just filter the excess off. I don't really want there to be much acetic acid left over because at some point we need to boil away all of the water and if there's a lot of acetic acid present then we're going to be boiling away the acid into the air. So like I said everything was added in small portions until eventually all of the vinegar had been added. As the two react a lot of carbon dioxide gas is formed and what we need to do is let it sit here and fully react and come back to it when it stops producing so much CO2. When we come back to it after a few hours, you can see that the solution is actually relatively clear and there's not much carbon dioxide being formed. Pretty much everything that hasn't reacted has sank to the bottom and we're left with a nearly clear solution. The next step is to filter things off to try to clear up the solution and to do this I just use several coffee filters in a funnel. The stuff that comes through is pretty clear but unfortunately even after filtering it a few times it remains a little bit cloudy. The particulate that makes it through is just too small for the coffee filters to stop and there's really not much we can do about this. Once everything's been filtered through, I turn on the magnetic stirring and I start to heat things up. What's interesting is as things heat up, you'll notice that the solution actually becomes cloudier and not clearer. This is mostly because the solubility of calcium acetate actually decreases with temperature, so as things heat up, some calcium acetate actually falls out of solution. Once it gets pretty hot, we actually hit a point that the solution becomes totally white when enough calcium acetate falls out. As we continue to boil down the solution, it's going to take on a yellow color, and this is to be expected. Someone actually contacted me and told me that the yellow color is just a property of wet calcium acetate, but I really don't know. Once the volume gets down to around 800 milliliters, I transfer it to a 1 liter beaker. Erlenmeyer flasks are actually terrible for boiling off liquid, and this beaker is going to work a lot better. As we keep boiling things down, you might notice a precipitate starting to appear. At some point, it will become very evident that there's a lot of white precipitate floating around. At this point, we're very close to being done, so you should monitor it carefully and don't take your eye off of it. Very quickly after the first precipitate appearing, it will start to thicken a lot, and eventually you'll be left with a sludge like this. At this point, stirring didn't work very well, so I decided to take it off of the hot plate. To get rid of the rest of the water, I simply poured the contents of a beaker into a container. I washed the beaker with a little bit of water to get rid of any calcium acetate that remained behind, but you really don't want to add too much water because you're just going to have to evaporate this off. I left it in the air with a fan on top of it for a couple days, and eventually it all dried out. At first it's going to take on a very strong yellow color, but as the water evaporates it will slowly become much more white. I didn't really monitor the drying process because I was working on some other projects, but you can see here that it's a mix of white and off-white stuff. As it fully dries though and we crush it up, you can see that we're left with a nearly white powder. In the end, the yield was about 184 grams of calcium acetate. So now after making both of these videos, I have a lot of calcium acetate to work with, and I should post the flammable jelly one soon. I honestly haven't really gotten around to doing the dried distillation to produce acetone, but I plan to do that sometime this week. So as usual, a big thanks goes out to all of my supporters on Patreon, but I have to give a very special thanks to everyone who donated $5 or more. Like I said in a previous video, I kind of have too many $5 supporters to realistically read out each of your names, but just know that I still love you all.